In this presentation, we will implement one bit full adder using multiplexer. The mux that I am using is 4 cross 1 mux and uh, the first thing that we require is the truth table and uh, I hope you are already familiar with the full adder and uh, in this we are having three inputs A, B in which A and B are the two numbers, one bit numbers that I want to add and C in is the carry from the previous sum. S is your sum, the output of the addition and C O is the carry output. If there is any carry then this C O will reflect it. So it's a very simple thing we already know this and um, we also know that how this values the output S is being evaluated and also the C out is being calculated. So the next thing that I have told you in the previous presentation is to see the number of variables. So in this I'm having three variables A, B, C, in and depending upon three variables I will make a 8 cell K map. So this is our 8 cell K map. There is one difference from the problem that we did in the last presentation is that in that there was only one output F but in this case we are having two outputs sum and carry output. So what I need is another K map. This K map is let's say for sum. This is for sum. Now I want another K map for the carry output. So I will copy this, copy and then paste and we are having a 8 cell K map, a separate 8 cell K map for the carry output. Similarly, I will require another max, 4 cross 1 max. This 4 cross 1 max is for the sum and we need one more 4 cross 1 marks for the carry output so I will copy this copy and then paste so we are having everything which is required to do the implementation so let's move the next step is to fill this cells depending upon the values written here so we are having 0 then 1 then 1 0 I'm not writing down the zeros okay then 1 0 0 1 so again this is a checkboard configuration you can see and uh, we will do the groupings later first let's fill this map for the carry output 0 0 0 1 then 0 1 1 1 fine so this is how it looks now we have to decide for our selector variables as you know in 4 cross 1 max there are two selector variables s0 s0 and s1 now i will assume that s0 is your b and s1 is your a in this particular case if i have taken b c i as my s0 and s1 then it would be a lot easier for us to evaluate the values but i don't want to do that i want you to show every possibility in this particular method so i have taken b as your s0 and a as your s1 now we will make a small table for the selector variables that we used to do so this is your a this is your B and then I'm having my output S. I'm doing for this particular K map and uh, this is for S so the output will be S. And uh, the four possibilities 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Fine. Okay. Now when A is 0 and B is 0 which means when S is 0 and S1 is 0 the output will equal to i0 similarly i1 i2 i3 so I have to find out the values of this input i0 to i3 so for first case when a is 0 and b is 0 let's see this k map when a is 0 a is 0 for this complete row okay but b is 0 for only the first two cells okay so this is when a is equal to 0 and 
P is equal to 0. The shaded portion shows the A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. And as we are working for the main terms, I am not going to see the zeros, but I will see only 1. Okay. So when it is 1, the value of C, because A and B are the selector variables, so the only thing left is CI. So the CI will act as our input. So we have to see only for CI because A and B are your selector variables. So for this particular cell, for this particular cell, the value is 1 and for this cell, the value of CI is 1, which means it is CI. So our I0 is equal to CI. Fine. So let's see the next case when A is 0 and B is 1. So A is 0 for this entire row and B is 1 for the last two cells. Fine. So let me shade it down. For this two cells, B is 1. And in this case, for the last cell, there is 1. Okay. And the value of CI is 0. You can see the value of CI is 0. So I will write it as CI complement. Let's see the third case in which A is 1 and B is 0. A is 1 for this entire row. Okay. And B is 0 for the first two columns. This yellow shaded portion. And in this case, there is 1 here. And for this cell, the value of CI is 0. So it is CI complement. I hope it's very simple for you to understand. And um, we will do the same thing for the last case when A and B both are 1. And it is the case for the last two cells. So I will shade this down. And in this, the 1 is here. And for this cell, the value of CI is 1. So it is CI. So I can say that we have done with our sum. And this is your I0, I1, I2 and I3. And I0 is CI. So I will write CI. I2, sorry, I0 is CI. I1 is CI complement. I2 is CI complement. And I3 is CI. And this is your sum. S. And these are your selector variables. B, A. So this is how we have implemented the sum okay this this sum has been implemented by using this four cross one marks a single ic however if you remember this sum is equal to what a xor b xor ci so we need two xor gates to implement this sum but in this case when using the multiplexers we only require a single ic so this is the advantage that i have been talking since a long time so Let's move to a carry output. We will do the same thing. And uh, I guess I will leave it as a homework for you to determine the value of this carry output and implement it in the four cross one marks. But I will definitely write down the out, uh, inputs so that you can check your answer. This is zero. This is your CI. This is your CI and one. And this is your carry output. The selector variables are again same B. A. So do it yourself and if you face any problem let me know in the comment box. So see you in the next presentation.